I started noticing that I had vitiligo at the age of about 12, around about the sixth grade, 12 or 11. And actually, you're actually born with it. And um, it's you inherited from someone in your family. So as a young kid, at that age, obviously you like frightened and you don't know what the hell is going on with your body. The spots would come and go, but eventually they, they came and they just wouldn't go away. They just grew larger. So they started going into the darker parts of my skin, which was my hands and my feet. A little started to appear on my nose and my lip also became a bit pinker as if I, like, I drank too much whiskey or something. We went to go see a dermatologist and um, he's the one that actually said, you have um, vitiligo. And I'm like, what the hell is that? And he's like, no, um, do you know what melanin is? I'm like, no, I'm only 13 years old. I don't know any science. And then he's like, okay, do you know what pigment is? And, I'm, uh, I, and I did a lot of art at school, so I knew pigment that had something to do with color. So I was like, it's color. So I was like, yeah, so melanin produces pigment which actually creates your skin color. So you basically are losing your pigment because your melanin does not produce enough pigment. So I'm like, what's the worst that could happen? It's like, you just have to make sure you didn't stay in the sun for too long. And I played a lot of cricket, so I'd been in the sun for quite a while. So I asked him about that. He's like, just put on sunblock when you're in the sun. Well, basically I wanted to, the whole process to stop. Um, you're 13, 14 years old, you're trying to get to know girls, you. It's not as if it's something I could hide, you know, like if you have another problem, maybe psychological, you can hide it, but mine, if you see me, you know I have this problem. And at the time, I regarded it as a problem. What I needed to do was twice a week, go to the dermatology ward um, at Kotiski Hospital, and basically I'd have to lie in this tub for like 10 minutes with some chemical in it. So um, I did that for about six months, and I kind of got over it, I got tired. Obviously, people were like, oh, look, oh, what's wrong with him? Others would be like, oh, shame. Um, others would want to touch me, see if it's painful. Um, kids were the worst. Um, they would follow me around. <laughs> I've been mistaken to be a colored person before, because I was, before I grew my hair, I, was, I always had shaved hair, so. Um, people just grow up, because when I was in Stellenbosch, they just took off the costume, because they think I'm colored. I've had black people think I'm white, I've had colored people think I'm white, I've had black people think I'm colored. Actually, I met this one girl who was quite an artist, um, went to a school near me, um, and then she was the first person that actually liked the way I looked, and enjoyed the way I looked, and um, complimented me. First time I really felt genuinely confident um, regarding a stranger was this chick. I wrote a book largely about it, and um, I got a great reception from it. Um, during that, me doing that book, I actually got a scholarship to go study Stella Marsh Photography and Design School. And um, without me looking like this, that would never have happened. I feel the best way to deal, or the way I've dealt with it, is just embracing it. Um, 